In confronting the sin of abortion, we must keep our focus in spiritual perspective. The Bible tells us, Our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places. Our enemy in fighting abortion is not primarily the abortionist, the courts, or those who are advocating for abortion rights. The enemy is the one who is a murderer from the beginning, Satan, and the spiritual forces under his command. Throughout history, certain pagan cultures have sacrificed human infants to their deities as part of a complicated ritual in return for favors asked of them. While few of those involved in abortion today are consciously engaging in child sacrifice, that is precisely what abortion is, the sacrifice of a human life for the convenience or needs of others. In that respect, it is no less barbaric than the human sacrifice practiced to ensure, for example, a successful harvest. But beyond this, there is a spiritual, satanically inspired dimension that gives frightening realism to abortion's identification with literal child sacrifice. The Bible supports this idea, as often we see a particular action viewed by God as something of a more overtly occult nature. Rebellion is called witchcraft. Immorality is likened to idolatry. Hatred is akin to murder. And thus, abortion is child sacrifice. To discover the origins of child sacrifice, we can examine a key passage of scripture. Genesis 19 gives the account of Lot and his daughters, some of the early ancestors of mankind. And Lot went up from Zoar, and stayed in the mountains, and his two daughters with him. Then the firstborn said to the younger, Our father is old, and there is not a man on earth to come into us after the manner of the earth. Now it so happens that there were men available just a few miles away geographically, but they meant something different. The earth is, throughout scripture, a symbol of the fallen, unregenerate realm. James tells us that there is a wisdom from above that is pure and peaceable. But there is also a wisdom from below, which is earthly, natural, and demonic. In the same way that many modern feminists want men purely on their own terms, Lot's daughters wanted a man in this manner of the earth. So they made their father drink wine that night and laid with him. This was a gross act of rebellion against both their father and God. As a result, both daughters had children. The oldest daughter's son was named Moab. His descendants, the Moabites, ultimately became an idolatrous nation that was one of the primary enemies of God's people, Israel. The youngest daughter's son, Ben-Ami, became the father of the sons of Ammon. 1 Kings 11.7 calls Moloch the detestable idol of the Ammonites. The name Moloch in Hebrew means to ascend the throne, or, in other words, to usurp God's authority. Leviticus 20.2 tells us that Moloch worship involved the sacrifice of one's offspring. While the Ammonites primarily sacrificed postnatal children, it is no coincidence that it is the Ammonites that God condemns in the book of Amos for a particular form of bloodthirstiness. For three transgressions of the sons of Ammon, and for four will I not revoke its punishment, because they have ripped open the pregnant woman of Gilead in order to enlarge their borders. To enlarge one's borders is a biblical metaphor applied not just to land, but to extend the boundaries of acceptable human conduct. How common this is still today, as we hear cries of, it's my choice, and keep your religion out of my life. And they built the high places of Baal that are in the valley of Ben-Hinnom, 
to cause their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire to Moloch. They have built the high places of Baal to burn their sons as offering to Baal. Here the Bible implies what modern archaeologists and anthropologists have recently discovered, that Moloch and Baal represent the same pagan god. The wife of Baal is Asherah, and the wife of Moloch is Ashtaroth. Asherah and Ashtaroth represent the same fertility goddess. This demon was known to the Greeks as Aphrodite, to the Egyptians as Isis, and to the Phoenicians as Tanit.